Hi guys, today we're gonna be doing a big old book haul cause I'm a big old liar. <laughs> I don't know why I bother saying I need to stop buying books because it clearly is not working. For real though, I do, but in the meantime, here's some content for you. These aren't in any like super particular order. I did kind of try to group a couple things together, but otherwise this is just chaos. So follow along if uh, you want just a general assortment of new books. So first up we have Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This is the Waterstones exclusive UK edition with really pretty sprayed edges. I believe the end papers are exclusive to this edition. The hardcover case has really pretty red foiling and it is signed by E.V.E. Schwab. So when I saw this on Waterstones, I had to have it. It's so pretty. Again, I really love these sprayed edges and just this edition of Gallant is really pretty. I like the US edition too, but this one really delivers, I think on like the Crimson Peak meets Secret Garden vibes that this book is sort of advertised as. So, oh, so pretty. And V.E. Schwab is one of my favorite authors, so she's pretty much an auto buy for me at this point. And I believe this book kind of straddles the line between middle grade and YA, but I, again, I'll pretty much read anything by V.E. Schwab. It sounds lovely and creepy and I, I love those things. So this book follows a young girl named Olivia and she is missing three things, a mother, a father, and a voice says her mother vanished all at once, her father by degrees, and her voice was a thing she never had to start with. Her only companions are the ghouls she sees in her mother's journal, which capture a mind in turmoil. At the beginning of this book, she is at a girl's school, but she receives a letter from her family asking her to return to the family estate, I believe called Gallant. And when, they, when she gets there, her family is like, we didn't send a letter, so... <laughs> This, again, sounds really creepy and spooky, but I think where it's a little bit aimed at a younger audience, I don't think it's going to be, like, too spooky. So, really excited to get to this one, and again, this is just a lovely edition. Next up, we have a couple fairy loot editions. I've done unboxing videos for these, but I also just wanted to include them in this haul. First up is Only a Monster by Vanessa Len. This is another beautiful sprayed edge edition. Uh, this is also the UK cover. The US cover I believe has like the girl's face on it. The end papers for this one are so pretty. So this is a YA sort of urban fantasy and it follows more of like the villain of the story which is always an interesting take. I believe it follows uh 16 year old Joan and she discovers that her family has like the power to, I believe she like, like they can take people's life force in order to travel in time. She's reluctant to use this power at first, but finds that she must do so. She also finds herself sort of having feelings for a more heroic boy, but knows that she herself is a monster, so very curious to pick this one up. I've heard really good things actually. I hadn't really heard much about this book before Fairy Loot picked it up for a special edition, but from the reviews I've seen, it's pretty good. So when I'm in the mood for an urban fantasy, I definitely want to pick this one up. And I believe it's a standalone, so that's always cool too. Then we have, I think, the prettiest special edition Fairy Loot has ever done, and that is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sulin Tan. These sprite edges are just amazing. It's almost a crime to shelve them in the proper way because you just you want to put that on display, you know. But yeah, I'm really excited to get to this. This is book one of a duology that um, is inspired by Chinese folklore and it just sounds so enchanting. The main character is the titular daughter of the moon goddess and I don't think she knows initially that her mom is the moon goddess. Oh, JK, she was literally raised on the moon. Never mind. <laughs> but she was unaware she was being hidden from the celestial emperor who exiled her mother for stealing the elixir of immortality. She's eventually forced to flee her home and leave her mom behind and she's powerless and afraid, but she makes her way to the celestial kingdom and she trains alongside the emperor's son in disguise and feelings arise, which I love a good forbidden romance. But yeah, this again, just sounds really enchanting. I love stories inspired by folklore and the romance in this sounds really good and I can't wait to get into this one. I'm also really excited to see what Fairy Loot does for the second book. I think it's, um, I can't remember the name. It's Son of like, this, like the Emperor or something or I, I don't know. I have a feeling it's gonna be more like 
sun inspired to kind of set off the moon theme of this one, but I'm excited to get into it. Again, I've heard really excellent things about this. The Goodreads rating on this book is really good, actually. So I'm hoping to pick this one up pretty soon. But in the meantime, I'm just going to admire these spread edges. I've been trying to get more into classics lately. It's been a really long time since I've read them, thinking like high school, college. <laughs> And I took a break from them for a while, but I recently picked up a couple and really enjoyed it. So I want to kind of dive into them more. So I picked up some of the Barnes and Noble faux leather classic editions. They're exclusive to Barnes and Noble. So I don't really have one local to me. So I ordered these ones online. I specifically ordered them because I was reading Frankenstein with a friend and I really loved this edition and I kind of want to get like their whole collection of these. They don't have, it's not as extensive as like the Penguin Cloth Bound editions. Those were like 170 or something like that. I think there's only like maybe 20 of these Barnes and Noble faux leather editions, but they're so pretty and I just love just how graphic and bold they are. They also have sprayed edges. This one's kind of like a muted red and I have read this one already. And I really like, like they're a special edition, but I don't feel super concerned that they're not gonna hold up to actual reading. Some special editions I'm like literally scared to read, especially some of the classic ones. These ones feel really good in the hand and they feel like, I like that they're flexible. So they make for like a really good reading experience. I really enjoyed that. And again, they're beautiful. So I wanted to pick up a couple. So I got Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and I'm currently reading Pride and Prejudice. And I actually already bought this particular like edition from this set of Pride and Prejudice a while ago, but I wanted to pick up Sense and Sensibility and Emma. I, this one is so sunshiny. I can't wait to read this sometime like this summer. I love the green cover and the yellow sprayed edges are so happy. And then Emma, is this really pretty sort of lilac-y color. It actually matches my nails pretty well with pink sprite edges. And again, they're just so happy and cheerful and I can't wait to read these. Pride and Prejudice is such a delight. It's like a comfort story for me. I've loved the movie and the miniseries for a really long time now. So I'm really excited to be finally delving into actually reading Jane Austen. These are the two other ones that I'm like most excited about from her, but eventually I would love to read all of her books. Then we have a couple graphic novels. First up is Squire. This one I've heard a lot about and actually my friend Stephanie was the one that first told me about it. I believe a friend of a friend of hers is like either like one of the authors or illustrators for this. So that's really cool. And again, I've been seeing this a lot on like Goodreads and online. And yeah, so I also had no idea how big it was going to be when I picked it up. I was like, whoa, that's a chonker. But I'm pretty sure this is a standalone and I know nothing about it, but um, I trust Stephanie, so let's read the back together. It says, born a second class citizen, Aza has always dreamt of being a knight. It's the highest military honor in the once great Beit Saji Empire. And as a member of the recently colonized Ornu people, it's her only way to full citizenship. Now ravaged by famine and mounting tensions between different provinces, Beit Saji finds itself on the brink of war once again, and Aza can finally enlist in a competitive squire training program. It's not how she imagined it, though. Hiding her Ornu status in order to better blend in, Aza must navigate new friendships, rivalries, and rigorous training under the merciless General Hend. As the pressure mounts, Aza realizes that the greater good Beit Saji military's promises might not include her, and that the recruits might be in more danger than she ever imagined. She will have to choose loyalty to her heart and heritage or loyalty to the empire. So that sounds really good. Um, the art is really gorgeous as well. And I just can't wait to read this. So I, I need to pick this up soon. It, it's been sitting in my pile of new books and I keep eyeing it. And I'm really excited about this one. I recently wrapped up reading V.E. Schwab's Shades of Magic series, the set of three novels, and found out that she had graphic novels like set before the main series that follows Quaint King Maxim in his youth as the Steel Prince. So I picked up the sort of set of three box set of them. And I believe it's just called, yeah, the Steel Prince, the complete graphic novel box set. Maxim was a really interesting character for me reading the books. I didn't quite like him at first, but I think he really shined in book three and it really made me excited to find out like what his backstory was. So I'm really excited to get into these. And I think like a graphic novel suits this world so well. <laughs> I think it's gonna be really cool to see how they sort of represent the magic system. This set also came with like art cards of the different covers, which I think is really cool. So very excited about that. And I'm excited to expand my knowledge of the Shades of Magic world. 
I believe this series is set exclusively in Red London, or like that world that Red London is in, because we're not following an Atari. So <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. I, I am really looking forward to getting to see a fuller scope of King Maxim's character, especially from when he is a prince and a young man himself, and to see how he became the man that I kind of sort of didn't like at first in the original novels. But yeah, these look really cool and I'm excited to read them. Now on to the sort of general chaos with no organization whatsoever. I'm just pulling right from the top of the pile here. We have a Far Wilder Magic by Allison Saft. I really liked her previous release. I believe it was her debut, Down Comes the Night. It had really creepy kind of like gothic vibes, but I loved the romance in that one. And I believe this is another standalone from the same author. And this one has more to do with like alchemy. And the main character is hunting down a rare creature. And it's like part of a larger sort of hunt competition thing. And she needs an alchemist to help her sort of win this competition. She teams up with this man named Weston, who isn't an alchemist yet, uh, but he's been training for it. But he's been fired from every apprenticeship that he's landed. And his last chance hinges on this happening. So they make kind of like an unlikely team, but they work well together. And Stephanie has read this and said it was really good. I think she gave it five stars on Goodreads. So that's exciting. I also love this cover. I love how moody the artwork is and then like the text really just pops being this really fluorescent yellow. I love that. So, so excited to read this and I love a good fantasy standalone. So this is cool. I found this next one at my local bookstore for like $4. And while I, it was on my radar, it wasn't like a super priority book for me to pick up. But I was interested enough in it to pick it up when I saw it for such a good deal. And that is Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Kuzniar. Kuzniar? I believe this is like a Nutcracker retelling. And I haven't heard a lot about it. I think like one of the book boxes did a special edition or maybe I'm thinking of the Waterstones exclusive edition. I probably won't get around to this one for a little while because it definitely gives me wintry vibes like the Nutcracker does. But we follow a ballerina named Marietta and as Christmas draws nearer, her dancing days are numbered. She must marry and take up her place in society in the new year. But when a mysterious toy maker purchases a neighboring townhouse, it heralds the arrival of magic and wonder in Marietta's life. I haven't really heard much about this book again, but it looks beautiful. I love the Nutcracker. So I think this will be a really cozy read to read in like December, maybe. So holding on to this one for a while before I pick it up probably, but it was a good find, $4, why not? A month or two ago, I read We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal with my friend Stephanie. So I decided to pick up the second book and the last one in the duology, We Free the Stars. I don't want to read too much about what the plot of this one is because I don't want to give anything away for myself or anyone who maybe hasn't read the first book. But the first book we follow a young huntress named Zafira and a assassin prince named Nasir and their paths cross in an unlikely way as they're sort of questing for the same thing. It's a really good like slow burn adventure story romance. I enjoyed the first one. I think I gave it like 3.5 stars. So I'm really curious to see how this series wraps up. It's inspired by ancient Arabia, which is always a cool setting. I really like the sort of mythology and folklore that sort of comes along with that setting. I think she built a really interesting world. Hasa Faisal's writing kind of borders like a little too purpley for me in some instances, but it is really beautiful. It's maybe not the most clear when something action-y is happening, but <laughs> I did enjoy the first one. So I would like to finish up the duology. She also has a new book coming out this year, I believe called Tempest of Tea. That sounds amazing. So I want to finish this duology before that book comes out. So I kind of have a better well-rounded opinion of her writing. But yeah, this one looks cool. And uh, I got to read this at some point. Might be a buddy read with Stephanie. I'm not sure. <laughs> I was not going to grab this next book initially because I had not heard really anything about it until Book of the Month picked it up. And I'm very hesitant to pick up fantasy books from Book of the Month because they don't always continue to sort of pick up that series. Like they publish a lot of first books in a fantasy series and then never follow through. And I like my editions to match because I'm a goof. But between Book of the Month and YouTube, I believe Illumicrate did this book recently as well. I've started hearing a lot about it and I think I might really like it. I 
think this is part one of a duology. It might be a longer series though. I actually don't know. And that is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. This is her first adult fantasy and I haven't read any of her YA, but I've heard good things about it. And this one, like, I think I have seen it compared to Name of the Wind, to Earthsea, and to Crescent City. And that is just a wild array of fantasy books. So I'm really not quite sure what to expect from this. I've heard it's part mystery, part fantasy, part romance. I like all of those things. So I'm hoping I'll like this. I think this is like a childhood friends to lover situation. Oh, JK, once childhood enemies. I love that though. I love like the long history between like two characters who eventually fall in love, whether it's contentious or, you know, more friendly. I think that long sort of history and like the development of their relationship is always really interesting to read about. So I'm excited to get that from this. So one of our characters is a bard who has been sent away from his homeland for a really long time. His name is Jack Tamer Tamerlin, and he's summoned home to the island of Cadence. But his return is not a joyous one. Girls are going missing from the island, and Adara, the future leader of the clan, believes Jack is the only one who can find them. And I believe Adara is our other main character. Says once childhood enemies, now unwilling partners, Jack and Idara must put aside their past rivalry to entice the spirits to return the kidnapped girls. Oh, this is a really long summary on this flap, so I'm not going to read all of it. But yeah, I don't know. This book is a little mysterious to me, but the vibes I'm getting from both the book itself and the reviews I've seen are positive, And I think I'm really going to like this. So very excited to jump into this one. And speaking of book of the month, I have uh, two of their more recent releases. It's really exciting that they're doing more picks per month. They seem to do a lot of like thrillers and romances. I'm not the biggest thriller reader and I prefer my romances in paperback. Book of the month has this sort of thing where if it's a series, they don't always publish the whole series and I don't like mismatched covers. So, oh, well, anyways, I digress. <laughs> um, First up, we have The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I know I just said I don't particularly like thrillers, but I actually really love Simone St. James. I think a thriller needs to be paranormal in order for me to like really feel invested in it. And she writes them so well. I think like her previous book of the month picks, this is also sort of a dual timeline thing. She tends to do that where like there's sort of this past timeline and a present day timeline and they each reveal things about the other part of the story in a really fascinating way. And again, I think she handles it so well. I, I think it would be really hard to write like that, but she makes it look effortless. So this one centers on a true crime blogger, which is fun. And she is, <laughs> says she gets more than she bargained for while interviewing the woman acquitted of two cold case slayings. So the first timeline takes place in 1977. And I love stories that take place in the 70s. And the more modern day one is in 2017. I don't want to read too, too much into it because I really just want to follow where she takes me. And I am really excited to get into this one. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year. I will pretty much buy anything Simone St. James writes at this point because her, her books have always been a really fun ride. So can't wait to see how this one is. And then I also grabbed The Cartographers by Peng Shepard. This was also, I believe, kind of categorized as fantasy maybe, but it seems more like magical realism. So I'm not quite sure how fantastical we're gonna go with this. It also seems to be like a mystery as well. I believe the main character's father goes missing. Yes, yeah, so her name is Nell, Nell Young and her whole life, the greatest passion of hers has been cartography. Her father, Daniel Young, is a legend in the field and Nell's personal hero, but she hasn't seen or spoken to him ever since he cruelly fired her and destroyed her reputation after an argument over an old cheap gas station highway map. Oh, he doesn't go missing, he's found dead, that's sad. Mm. Um, so this is when Dr. Young is found dead in his office at the New York Public Library with the very same seemingly worthless map hidden in his desk, Nell can't resist investigating. To her surprise, she soon discovers that the map is incredibly valuable and exceedingly rare. In fact, she may have the only copy left in existence because a mysterious collector has been hunting down and destroying every last one, along with anyone who gets in the way. So she's trying to figure out why it's being destroyed, why her father got killed and all of this. I don't know, it sounds interesting. The whole bit about like someone hunting down each copy and destroying it reminds me a lot of Shadow of the Wind. So I'm hoping this kind of has like similar mysterious atmosphere vibes, obviously much more contemporary than Shadow of the Wind was, but I've heard kind of mixed things on this one. So I'm not sure which way it's gonna go, but I was curious enough to pick this one up. 
and it's a good deal from book of the month. On its release date, I picked up Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey because I really liked the first book in this romance duology. It happened one summer, and this follows the other sister in that story, Hannah. And I really like the sort of Pacific Northwest setting. And the first book was more like party girl meets hardy fisherman and unlikely romance ensues, where this one is more of like a friends to lovers situation. Our character, Hannah, is like into music and she works for a production company and she eventually wants to like put together the soundtracks, I think, of movies. The love interest is the best friend of the love interest from the first book. So he's also a fisherman, but he's a lot less gruff. He's more of like a pretty boy, kind of sleeps around a lot kind of guy. And him and Hannah have a really like strong kind of instant connection, but they're both really like not sure how to proceed because Fox, the love interest, is not a commitment guy and Hannah doesn't want to get hurt. So they kind of have to navigate how they go forward from there. And it was cute. I, I've already read this one because romance books are really fast for me. So I think if you liked the first one, you'll probably like this one as well. Tessa Bailey is not my favorite romance author, but this series in particular has been a lot of fun. So I'm glad I picked this one up. Next up is The City of Dusk by Tara Sim, who I've not read from yet. I think this is her first adult book as well, actually. I think everything else she's come out with is young adult. And I don't know much about this other than it's fantasy and I believe it's queer. <laughs> um, ooh, it says, enter a world of bone and shadow magic, of vengeful gods and defiant chosen ones. It says the four realms, life, death, light, and darkness all converge on the city of dusk, but the gods have withdrawn their favor from the once thriving and vibrant metropolis and without it, all the realms are dying. This one sounds really good. I feel like I didn't hear anything about it for a really long time. And then all of a sudden I've been hearing a lot about it. And literally when I went into the bookstore, I passed a person who like picked this book up and I grabbed the last one there and I was like, wow, this book's more popular than I thought it was. So yeah, I'm excited to get into this one. I was also approved for an arc of this and I have not read it yet because I got approved for an arc like the week before it came out. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. So I feel obligated to read this and I am intrigued. And yeah, should be cool. These last few are all used books. So I got pretty good deals on all of them, which is fun. That's part of the, the book buying hobby for me is sort of the thrill of finding a good deal. So first up in this sort of subcategory is The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. I don't know if this is necessarily Dark Academia, but I've seen this book on like aesthetic, like book aesthetic videos on like TikTok and it seems really interesting. And like, I don't, I think it's a historical fiction, maybe. I don't know. This was in the general fiction section. The little blurb says, in this remarkable debut novel, based on actual events, as a team of male scholars compiles the first Oxford English dictionary, one of their daughters decides to collect the objectionable words that they omit. I don't know, this seems like a book like about loving books and language and words. So I don't, again, don't know a whole lot about it, but the vibes are, are interesting. So when I saw this pre-owned, I decided to snap it up and I think this will make a good fall read. So I'm excited for this one. I was really excited to find this next one in hardcover because I feel like I've only ever seen it in paperback and that is Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. I've heard this has a good romance in, 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 at the center of it. And I believe it's the first one in a duology. The second one is Vow of Thieves, I think, and it's red. Keeping my eye out for that one too, but I have not found it yet. It's a fantasy. I believe it's also young adults. The blurb says, a formidable outlaw family that claims to be the first among nations, a son destined to lead, thrust suddenly into power. Three fierce young women of the Rattan, the queen's premier guard, a legendary street thief leading a mission determined to prove herself. A dark secret that is the th that is a threat to the entire continent. When outlaw leader meets reformed thief, a cat and mouse game of false moves ensues, bringing them intimately together in a battle that may cost them their lives and their hearts. That is an incredibly vague summary, um, but TikTok is all over this book and I'm curious. TikTok has steered me wrong in the past but I am very intrigued by this one and this seems more up my alley than some other previous TikTok recommendations have been. So I hope this is good. I feel like I've seen good ratings for it. So yeah, I've been keeping my eye out for a used edition of this book, mainly because I've seen Elliot review this book and she said it was really cute. It's part one of a duology. 
It's fantasy YA. And I was really intrigued by her sort of review of it. And it definitely made me want to pick it up. And that is Blade of Se Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. I've not yet read anything by Trisha Levenseller. I do own Warrior of the Wild as well. And both of those books, this one and Warrior of the Wild, I've heard are kind of cute. Or at least like they have like more of a wholesome fantasy vibe. Warrior of the Wild more so than this one. I know our main character in this one suffers from social anxiety, which is sort of interesting. And she is a bladesmith forge master I don't know what the title is <laughs> but she prefers metal to people and I believe she receives a commission to make this really powerful sword for a warlord and ends up keeping the sword herself accidentally or on purpose I am not sure okay she learns of his intentions with like to use the sword and she's like no and runs away with her sisters and the sword and again part one of a duology I'm very curious to sort of see what the hype with Trisha Levenseller is about. Unfortunately, I did not notice that this looks like it's been chewed. The danger of pre-owned books, I suppose, but it's fine. And yeah, I don't know. This seems really cute and interesting. And I've heard her books like are really fast. And even just looking at it, like the font and everything, like I feel like I could blast through this in an afternoon, you know? So sometimes you need like a little fluffier bit of fiction between the really hardcore high fantasy reads. So I'm going to save it for when I need something like that. And finally, uh, the last book in this haul, another book that has been really hyped on TikTok. And I'm not sure which way it's going to go for me. I feel like I either love or hate TikTok's sort of obsessions, but I have Furyborn. I also picked this one up used. So I figured if I didn't like it, you know, no harm, no foul, whatever. Not that big of a deal. But it, the concept for this one is really interesting. There's like this prophecy about these two queens. One will turn like evil and one will be like a savior. And you're following two young women and you're not sure like which one will be which. And I think that's a really interesting concept. So this is a finished trilogy. I only have the first one. If I like it, I'll pick up the next two. I was excited to find it in hardcover for a good price. So hopefully if I do end up liking it, I can pick up the sequels for a similarly good price, but we shall see. All right, and that wraps up my book haul. I'm not gonna bother saying that I need to stop and I'm not gonna have another book haul for a while because obviously I'm a liar, so. We'll see. Thank you guys for sticking around if you have through this book haul. Hopefully, maybe one of these books sparked your interest. Let me know if there are any books in here that you love. I have certain plans for certain books, but if you think I should pick up like one book soon or if you really love a book, please gush about it down in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. Your hype makes me hype. Let's spread the hype. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Feel free to leave a comment down below saying hi. And yeah, have a great day. Bye.